Hello, I am Nick, the DM today, running a special one-shot while Ethan plans the next actual arc of Happy Heroes Anonymous. We stream on Twitch every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, and we post episodes to YouTube the following Wednesday. Um, tonight's session will feature new Unearthed Arcana races, and also new monsters from Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. Uh, the music we use comes from Battlebards, Tabletop Audio, and Incompetent. Um, if you are watching us on Twitch, please be sure to check out the, the channel page for links and info. And if you're watching on YouTube, check the video description for all those things. And if you want to find out um, things about us when we post new episodes, when we're going live, um, upcoming schedule changes may happen pretty soon. We're still kind of working out the next few weeks. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter at, uh, at AntiHeroesAnon. And uh, please enjoy the show and share it with your friends. And now I am going to introduce the players and their new characters for this one shot, starting with Ethan. Uh, hello, I'm Yordle the Tortle. No, I'm uh, Ethan and I'm playing Yordle the Tortle, who is a <laughs> slow speaking and uh, uh, simple pleasure enjoying Tortle cavalier fighter. Take it away. Hi, I'm Kay. Um, for this one shot, I am playing Colt the Centaur. Barbarian. Uh, he is kind of uh, boring and he likes nature and being outside, um, but he really likes to follow rules and he gets annoyed when people don't follow the rules. Um, he's part of the town guard and uh, let's see, he has black hair, but he's got like eagle feathers braided through and it's very like tribal and wow. nice. And oh, that's He's got tan skin and like chestnut colored fur on his like horse hat. And yeah, that's him. Any cool tattoos? Yeah, he probably has like like a big like wing tattoo like coming down his shoulder. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Good canon now. <laughs> I'm Melissa and I play Wenshi Garrick and he is a rock gnome that is a bard. And um uh, he likes to gamble because that's how he won his money to college. And so now he's addicted, so he's a bounty hunter to earn money to lose money. That's what you. <laughs> I'm Zach. I'm playing Malik, who is a warlock. And uh, Malik may or may not have deceived several people to get into his current position. Uh, <laughs> one notable thing is that he also has a. Uh, he carries around a. a a bag with him that has these like weird splotches with a bunch of different colors on it that some sometimes may get attention, uh, which he tries to shrug off and not draw too much to it. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, he has uh, dark black hair. Um, he's five foot ten or so, but yeah, and he's a half elf. Okay. All right. So I am going to read out the introductory text that I've written for this one shot. Uh, please save your questions for the end. Okay. So here we go. In the world of Yulana, the kingdom of Enelar was governed from the seaside castle town of Waterhaven. King Burton and Queen Rashigar were reasonably just monarchs, and if their subjects had any gripes about the way things were run, they mostly kept it to themselves in the interest of harmony. One fine spring afternoon, a royal guard officer, whose name was Cole, noticed a speck in the sky. Unlike a bird, it didn't seem to move, but it was too tiny and dark to be a cloud. He stared at it for a few moments before realizing that it was actually growing larger, and that there was now a faint whistling sound. The sound grew louder and louder, and the speck kept expanding, and it wasn't long at all before it was clear that it was actually a faraway object of significant size, and it was hurtling toward water aid. Miraculously, no one was hurt when the thing crashed with a terrible, violent noise in a forest outside the walls. Colt and his partner Yordle were sent to investigate, along with a court mage, a small force of guards, the Queen's Chancellor, and an irritating foreign story singer who insisted on being there to record the tale. <laughs> what they discovered was beyond belief. <laughs> the object was about the size of a corvette ship, though it had been fashioned to resemble a barracuda whose eyes were portholes. There were no sails, masts, or rudder, though it looked as if the fins of the barracuda worked as some kind of oar. But the Barracuda ship was not the strangest sight the small band of court officials saw that day. Out from the Barracuda's mouth came a heavy cloud of black smoke as, one by one, 
a procession of the most unearthly people anyone in MLR had ever seen emerge, choking and coughing as they stumbled clear from their ruined craft. First came two thickly built and extremely tall humanoids in fine military garb, which had been singed and torn in places from the crash. Each of them had the head of a hippopotamus and were fussing over personal effects which had been damaged, a cracked monocle and a bent brass pipe, respectively. Then came a teenage girl whose most striking features were her fishy tail and scaly skin, which almost seemed to glow from some internal light. She was leading a gray six-eyed monster twice her size on a leash, as if it were a pet. They were followed by a squarish metal box on legs with huge eyes and tiny wings, which seemed to be unbothered by the smoke affecting the rest. Close behind that was what looked like a pair of twins, or at least both of the orange skin, flat-nosed, long-eared figures, wore matching sets of form-fitting black leather. And the last to emerge from the barracuda's mouth was a woman in white robes with light blue skin. A pair of thin antennae peeked out from her head of red hair accented with a single shock of green. The hair was also marked with streaks of gray, which, together with the laugh lines around her mouth and crow's feet at her eyes, suggested she was getting on in years. Despite that, it was clear she was in command from the way all of these alien eyes snapped toward her when she barked out. Well, that's a Niyogi trick we won't fall for twice, am I right? But it looks like all you bastards are still in one piece, more or less, so thank Oscar for that. What do you do? <laughs> oh, <God. clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'll walk up to them and say... And of course, uh, Yordle is riding on okay. Colt's back. Your Yordle's <laughs> on my back. Mm -hmm. I walk up looking very stately, and I say... In the name of the king and the queen, state your business here. If you would be so kind. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you addressing? Uh, the, the one that looks like the leader. Okay. The older lady. Blue-skinned lady. Uh, oh, our business. Well, I can't speak for my crew, of course. My business is to wait until I can get going again. And then I guess I'll have a good time in your fair city. What's good to do? What's fun around this Prime. Well, you've ruined all the nice mushrooms in the forest, that's for sure. Eh, better them than us. Anybody like to gamble? <laughs> um, the, the, the woman sneers and says, Members, lady likes to gamble. And the, like, the boxy creature steps forward and says, I am an excellent gambler. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it goes on my money. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna look around at the ship, and mm -hmm. actually, I think I'd like to insight check the leader. Okay. Uh, any particular statement? Like, what are you hoping to get out of the insight check? Just kind of to see if they have any hidden ulterior motives for being here. Right. If the crash is legit a crash. Okay. And not only appearing like a crash. Gotcha. Okay, go ahead and roll an insight check. I don't know my... Oh, I do have good insight. Come on, next. Uh, oh, that's not bad. Uh, 21. I need a moment. Oh, because I'm logged into you. I can't check my actual character. Oh, no. Um, said 21? Yes. Hard to read. Oh, I see. Uh, Yordle will look around, being generally fascinated by weird looking people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of the people you described, this hippopotamus head guy? Mm -hmm. Hippopotamus head guy? Sounds, there's two of those. Oh, there's two of them? Yeah. Sounds strangest to me. And they have weird devices on them, too. You mentioned monocles. Yeah. So Yordle's going to go over to them and say, would you be so kind as to lend me that eye device? I'd like to get a look. <laughs> what is it with you and your obsession with turtles? <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> um, the hippopotamus headed person says, <clears throat> Thank you. This eye device, I, I need it to see you, so I, I can't give it up easily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I didn't mean to presume. 
But would you mind if I borrowed it for just a moment? I'll oh. give it right back, I promise. No, well, I do need to, uh, I need to be examining the ship, you say. Um, but I'm on the <coughs> And then Yorla, like, takes it and puts it on his eye. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, the prescription's bad, so he, like, yeah. bugs out. But uh, then he kind of, like, looks at it again for a moment, and then just gives it back. It's bifocus, you say. I'm, I, I, I'm nearsighted in one eye, and <laughs> far the other, and so <laughs> it's good for me to have one, so that I can close one. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. But I, I really must, mm, I, I must get, look over the ship. Um, a boss. And the woman says, uh, yeah, yeah, what is it? Says, uh, I, I, I will, I'll be looking things over, but, um, I think I already know what the problem is. Would you like some help? I like to tinker. Mm. Yeah. Roll an insight check. <laughs> Be a one because I forgot to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a one. Oh, you rolled a one. Okay. <laughs> um, it's good dice. Yeah, the uh, the hippopotamus headed lady said, oh, that's, That would be quite all right. I know my business. Okay. You should <clears throat> go ahead and get yourself a monocle like he has. How do you know I don't have she, one already in my has. pack? I've got lots of disguises. But then yeah. suddenly she seems to change her mind. Says, actually, I could use some help. The um, four of you seem to be kind of fair. Would you mind giving me, uh, having me give the ship one server? Glad to help. Well, I don't know much about ships or uh, fish or the sky, but I'll do my best. Mm. And she turns back to him and said, uh, Ms. Wright, will you be um, taking your usual pleasure? And the lady said, yeah, I expect you will. Uh, you got things under control here? I'm instantly uh, scared of this riot lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I have everything under at hand with these um, able, able folk of the kingdom. <clears throat> Well, that's all well and good, but the law of the land requires that we escort you back into the town and give you uh, proper, sign the proper paperwork and get you all settled in. If you would come with us. Nah, Red says, I am ain't much for laws. And she just leaves. Along with the entire I, can rest I just of her. Can I run around and cut her off? Like in her path? I'm a centaur. I run really fast. I run really fast. She frowns at you for a second and says, It's okay, miss. What are you doing? What is this? Please, I insist. Our people are friendly and welcoming. You have nothing to worry about. Why don't you stay here and help Quentrith with what she asked you to do? How about that? I have no mind for machinery, but I do have a mind for the law, and I will escort you back into the city so you can fill out the proper paperwork. See here now. <laughs> she, she rolls her eyes for a second. Um, make a wisdom saving throw. A wisdom saving throw? Yeah. Is she casting a spell? Mm hmm. Okay. Yordle, like, looks intensely trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, 21. Oh, hey. Yeah. You actually beat it. Yeah. And, like, she whistles a tune, and you feel like this, this shuddering sensation go through your body. And she frowns at you in surprise when that doesn't work. Please, no. What is this? Make this easier for both of us. We can do this the easy way, or we can do this. My way. Her way is the hard yes. way. <laughs> <laughs> and she she looks oh, right. His <laughs> his way is the hard way. <laughs> I'm sorry, us turtles don't fully understand gender. <laughs> um. So, all right, which way is the town? Right this way, please. Cool. I'll see you all guys back at the town, and then she disappears. Well, she said she was going. But the paperwork. It'll get done. Um, excuse me, if you do. Might you come this way, please? Can I cast mending on what he thinks is broken? 
Um, on what? On what? Who thinks it's broken? On what the hippo? Oh, oh, oh. Head Guy thinks. Yeah, she broken. she hasn't shown you anything yet. Okay. But um, see, and she says, "Then well, will I see you? Uh, see you later, perhaps." And the other hippo says, "Yeah, yes, yes. I, I think that uh, I'll keep an eye on the boss and make sure she doesn't get into the usual trouble." Splendid, splendid. <laughs> we best get back to town and warn them about this. Uh, excuse me. These nice folks are requesting that we check out their ship. It's actually <laughs> quite imperative to stay with me, please. I'm sorry, but I'm on duty. I will send someone else to come and assist you. No, you, you don't understand. It's okay, Colt. We can help these people. <laughs> what don't We're we on understand? Duty. Uh, the others are starting to leave at this point. Where are they going? They're they're headed back in the direction of the town that you indicated. It is. <laughs> I just start walking and following them. It is. It is for the. <laughs> I walk up to him and say, "It's okay. We'll get this sorted out. Just show me what the problem is, and I'll turn my friend one shoe, Garrick, onto the problem." The problem is that Miss Riot is going to destroy your kid if you don't come with me. Can I roll inside on that? Yes. Okay. I will also roll inside. I'm like walking with Just people. Just to see so. how scared of Ryan. I assume I didn't yeah. hear that. I uh, got I got a ten. I got a ten as well. Okay. She seems to be on the up and up. Hmm. She's like visibly shaken by this. And yeah. Like, okay. So I you're confess, there. I'm also scared of Miss Riot. <laughs> Her name is Riot. Ms. Riot is something of an uh, something of a revolutionary. She's quite persuasive. If we leave her and her devices, her idea of fun is, um, well, fomenting revolution, inciting anarchy, that sort of thing, and she's quite good at it. I expect that um, if we don't move immediately, you will not have much of the kingdom left within a week. Don't look at me, I'm not there, I'm walking back from yes. the people. So you suppose we fix back. your ship in a week? Yes, it can be done. I just need proper uh, um, stones, some some rare minerals. So. Well, you know, I am from the wilds around here. I'm ah. familiar with stones. Mm -hmm. And and you other two, you, have you any familiar with them? Um, mining uh, stones or that sort of thing? As the court mushroom man, so I don't <laughs> trifle with stones and the like, typically. Mushroom mancer? Yes. <laughs> but, but you must have, um, you must have contact with the felt who live underground, the, um, the, what do you call them, their uh, myconids and so forth. They would know, mm. wouldn't they not? Yes, as the forger of fungi, I typically know another, a thing or two. Uh, good, good. Um, I would like, how much do you actually know about, like, is... I'm trained in survival. Is, but do you have any? Do you have any special knowledge of like stone? Because like uh, I would definitely let no. Like one no, ship I can don't. make a history check here. I just for for being a rock gnome. Training and survival. And you can make a history check if you are on the up and up about knowing my See, that's better. I would think so. Okay. Yeah. Then like you can make a history check for stuff the Mike might have told you about things underground. So, Nineteen. Okay. Great. You said history. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we got a fourteen. Oh, okay. Um, then what you know, Malik, is that you know about an old mine where, and like, the hippopotamus lady, whose name is Quentrith, by the way, um, describes to you the sort of, she calls it um, star crystal. And judging by her description, you know of a mine where some might be, but you also know that the miners of that mine died there, and it was sealed like ages ago. Um, okay. And what you know, one shoe, is a bit more than that. You know of that same mine, and you know that it is rumored to be caught in an age-old struggle between war and fae, and people who get in the middle of that struggle tend to die. What if we just ask them nicely? How far away is this mine? Do we, and then do we know it's, it's... It's like a couple of days travel from here. Quite a ways on foot. A couple 
couple days. Yeah, we'd best leave immediately then. If only we had a ship that wouldn't crash into this nice forest. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we haven't much time to lose. If we, if we leave now and recover the, the star crystal and return in time, we, there may be something of your society left. I will go recover our horse first. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be excellent. The more of us the better, I think. <laughs> I go after Colt, and uh, I presume find Colt trying to get the group to fill out the necessary <laughs> yes. Uh yes. And I, I shunt that work off onto like a, a bookkeeper or yeah, something Colt, like that. Yeah, Colt, every time you try to approach, in particular, the teenage girl, like this giant gray thing like rushes forward and snaps at you. <laughs> I'm not scared. Yeah. Just like put my hand up. With the paper. <laughs> it's like an import form for pets. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like the pet declaration form. <laughs> like here. Put, it, put it in its mouth. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I'm like not scared at all. Yeah. Just like, yeah, right the, here. The girl just shrugs and says, I'm not signing anything that uh, the cupcake won't let you sign. And that's that. I think I can do something here. Oh, mm. but it's not. What What is cupcake? It's not like a beast. Uh, I think the cupcake might be an operation. Okay, then this. Side gray monster. Yeah. Like a beast. No, it doesn't sound like a beast. I was like, it's a yes, I have like animal handling. Oh, no, animal cupcake animal. is the giant monster. The giant monster. The, the pet. gray reaver or whatever. Yes. I believe it's an apparition. Okay. Luckily, I have apparition handling. <laughs> is that a skill? Must be me. Oh, it's a monstrosity. Roll an insight against my deception, and maybe I do. It's not, not a beast, though. Six. Oh, yeah. did you? Yeah. It's cool. I'm just very patiently saying. Mm -hmm. 16. You have to fill out the form. It's mm. the rules. Just mm. fill out the form. Two seconds. And you and Cupcake can go into the town and harass as many people as you want. Why are crimes always like this? She says and takes the paper from me and starts scribbling on it. <laughs> I find like the scrawniest, most defenseless looking page mm -hmm. just because I'm looking for anyone and that's who I find. Uh, and I sign them up to, like, cupcake duty. So, like, they have to make sure this paperwork gets filled out. <laughs> yes. All right. and, then, and then I take Colt by the hand and, like, come on, Colt. Okay. You've got to go. But the if we don't, they'll destroy the world. What? Or the town. <laughs> what? Like, that was a good slip. <laughs> we just let them into the town? Yep. It's fine as long as we get back here from the mines within a week. I'm going to find, like, another... So I suppose another... we should run quickly. Uh, member of the guard, someone that I trust, mm -hmm. and be like, watch them closely. Yeah, uh, Baron, Baronwald, uh, which is the other hippopotamus man. So don't worry, Master. Uh, I'll stall for time as long as I possibly can. Well, there you have it. Things will be fine as long as we're. Well, I called you missing. Sorry. Don't it's worry. Okay. Don't worry, uh, uh, chap. I'll stall for time as long as I can. <laughs> Colt is a chap. Colt is a chap. Oh, that's so funny. Um, uh, still find, I still would like mm, to find, like, sure. one of my trusted, like, fellow guards. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Philippe. <laughs> yes. Okay. Philippe, and he's also a centaur. <laughs> he came from my town. We joined the guard together. We go way it's back. It's a quiet village. <laughs> it's a provincial town. Okay. And he's going to look after uh, rights. Every day. Yeah. Oh, you just just keep an eye on them. Uh, I don't trust them. Uh, they're, what they're what do you want me to do if, I don't know, if anything happens? Well, be ready to arrest them if you can. If you can't, put the city on alert. Make sure you ask them nicely first to stop. <laughs> you don't just have to be that nice. That works. Okay. Just you, you know, yeah, says, you know the signals, the smoke signals. Yeah. If, if something goes bad, I'll come I'll, running back I'll, to town. I'll do, it, I'll do it, everything in my power, but please hurry. I intend to. Where are we going? To the mines. The mines. Okay. This is not part of my job description. <laughs> I swing up onto Colt's back. I feel like I grab you by the shell and just pull you up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two things. Yeah. If I do it, though, I only have to use five feet of my movement. Instead of fifteen, so there's that. You need to get. Okay. All right. 
Uh, I'd like to imagine there's like a little ladder <laughs> just for you. Mm-hmm. Climb up. Little turtle ladder. Little turtle ladder. So we'll go back to, I guess, where the crash site. What was the hippo's name? Quen- Quentrith. Quentrith. Yeah. Okay. The female hippo. Yeah. Quentrith Sutcliffe. Okay. Her husband's name is Baron Wald Sutcliffe. All right. Cool. All right. Let's get back, shall we? And as soon as you're back, she says, "All right, then, let's let's be on our way, shall we?" Chop, chop. No time to lose. All right, let's follow. Let's follow Colt. Colt knows the way. Colt knows everything. Start the way. It's <laughs> <laughs> like fine. So Malik is like a little slow paced because he's like constantly looking at mushrooms. He's like, oh, beautiful specimen. <laughs> he's like putting him in this like weird splash bag you guys may have seen before. He's like, oh. Anytime he gets too slow, I poke him with my lance. But... <laughs> From my back. Coming. <laughs> Coming. Just one second, please. <laughs> After a couple of days trip, you arrive at the entrance to the mines. Um, and they, the entrance <laughs> is like boarded over. Um, they've like hammered pythons into a bunch of like very strong and sturdy boards. Looks a little bit different than what the Mykonids told me. Do you suppose we should knock first? I take out my greatsword and I start hacking away at it. Okay. I suppose I that's that a, counts as I guess that's a horse person's way of knocking. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not going to the stealthy approach yet. Just yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just breaking down the door. Okay. The boards. <clears throat> With my greatsword. I think, I think like, after a couple of swipes, Quintra is good. <clears throat> Mr. Kraut, if you, if you wouldn't mind, indulge in another woman for a moment, and stand well clear. Well, I suppose we should oblige. And she fishes in the pockets of her, like, fancy dress and pulls out this little, like, egg. And walks over to the boards and, like, sets it down on the ground and, like, fiddles with it a bit. And then starts to run. Says, everyone back now. <laughs> You're yeah. almost like curious about this, and Megan's wandering forward. I grab him by the shell and I put him <laughs> on my back. And then I run and, and I scoop too. one of each of them under my arms yeah. and run away. If we're not already away. About ten seconds. I assume I can run past. About ten seconds pass, and then there is an explosion from the egg. And all of the boards just like go flying into splinters of wood. Who, and who are these people? I guess that's another way of knocking. What <laughs> 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 offspring do they lay that explode in such a manner? <laughs> None of my siblings' eggs ever exploded in that way. You still have much to learn, my friend. You're dealing with some terrifying people. After you, please. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll head in. Yeah, you think your head's in first. I'm, I'm pretty interesting. Interested in seeing what sort of uh, <laughs> mushrooms I can find in here. Okay. So. And you can tell I'm like not really looking forward. I'm like looking at like the corners and stuff, like typical where they're going to grow. Oh, things. I will walk behind him and keep an eye forward. Do you yeah. have any kind of light? It's probably dark. I have dark vision. I have dark vision. I do. Too. Do I have dark vision? I don't think I do. Does the hippo have dark vision? I don't think uh, so. Yordle will. No, the hippo does not. Hunter does not. Um, I don't think I have a cantrip to help you guys, so... But I do have torches. Uh... Would one of you mind carrying a torch? I unfortunately need both my hands. <laughs> he says with nothing in his hands at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, I'll, and I'll light a torch and hand it here. Won't you? Why don't you have the torch for us? Fine, I'll be the torch bearer. I need help my hands me, to help me find forage. the stones we need anyway. Oh, I do have torches. Who's, uh, who's going in first? I will. Okay. So you go in with the torch, um, and are you, all, are you all following close behind, or are you just like kind of waiting for a little inside? Yeah, I'm following close behind. Okay. Um, then what you find inside is um, there's a short chamber behind where the boards were, a uh, very short hall, about like 10, 15 feet that leads to a chain and pulley system um, and an elevator. Um, it's You can't see the bottom of the shaft, so it's hard to determine how like 
how deep it is, but you can smell something terrible from down there. Terrible like what? Like rotting flesh. Mm. Is that normal for the mine? No one's been in this mine for a long time. Okay. Or at least it doesn't look like it. At least you would guess no one no one has supposed to have been in this mine for a long time. I've heard the tales of the miners dying, but not recently. Sounds like somebody's been in here recently. Only one way to find out. Let's go. Is right. there an obvious way to operate the pulley? Um, you think you can figure out with just like a few minutes work. Um, it's basically like you you get on the elevator and then you start pulling the chain. Okay. And, and this gear system makes sure that you don't just fall all the way down at once. Well, I, I it, take, it takes I'm some probably the strongest, so I'll yeah. I'll take care of the pulley. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty physically strong. I'm 18, not. 18 strength. Whoa, how'd you get 18 strength? With uh, total bonuses plus ability score increase. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So I will lower us down in there. What's that? Oh, that's cool. Ooh. I like that. We got maps on top of maps here. Oh my gosh, this is pretty meta. <laughs> Stop it! What? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't, that wasn't a joke at your expense. Oh, oh, I wasn't actually. <laughs> oh, that's great. I wasn't actually poking fun at you. Actually, you quite woke. <laughs> he doesn't need any help. Okay. All right. So this is the elevator, and you're kind of like on the back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is our hippo friend coming with us too? Um, yeah, she, she, she has, to, it's like a very tight squeeze because she's a very thick person and this is an elevator meant for like a few people or one person and a cart full of loads. Mm -hmm. So weight isn't a problem, but you, you all have to like squeeze very uncomfortably together. True. Okay. One of us does have the physicality of a horse, so. Yes. Really? It's just the truth. <laughs> The good news is that all five of you are medium creatures. Yep. yep. Can I roll a perception check once we get down here? Yeah, go ahead. See what's around? Uh, that's 17. Okay. Um, that's pretty good. There is... So, you can see by the light of the torch that um, one shoe is holding. He said one shoe. One shoe. The one shoe was holding is what I heard. No. Uh oh. He got it right. He got it right. Good <laughs> uh -oh. job. One shoe is holding it. One shoe. Um, by the light of one shoe's torch, <laughs> you can see um, pretty much to the edge of that little um, hall leading off to the to the north. I don't know if that's north. I'm just going to call that north. This direction is north? Yes. It works. Um, you're in a kind of an antechamber where there are a like pile of old picks and what looks like very old, very rusted um, mine carts are here and there. And the smell from down here is just overpowering. You estimate that you travel down about a hundred feet. And now that you're down here, you can, you see why it's because in that little cul-de-sac is a heap of goblin bodies which seem to have been freshly killed. Huh. Well, that's unnerving. Would it be like a medicine check to see how they were? Yeah, or how long ago they were. Check. I am proficient in medicine. You are? I'm curious. Then yeah, you should make it. All right. Because I'm not. No, I did not roll well unless someone wanted to help me. I'll help. Okay. Because I said I was going to do it anyway. Oh, uh, it's not much better, but we'll see. <laughs> I got a 12. Okay. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how long ago this goblin died, and the reason for that is that if they had been chopped to death, then you would have been had like blood clotting or something to go on. But these goblins were very clearly bludgeoned to death, mm -hmm. and they have like nasty purplish wounds all over their bodies. Um, but it does make it, and like a couple of their skulls are caved in. Does make it sort of hard to identify a time of death. Okay. Well, not much to see here. 
Not sure when they died. I suppose we should keep moving. And you say that, and then you hear this kind of dragging sound. Coming from... Dragging sound? Dragging sound. Oh, dragging. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, this, isn't a, this is not a one-shot about the time you all died. <laughs> <laughs> it no, very well could be, though. No, the turtle dives into the pile of bodies and goes in his shell. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to roll a stealth check. It's really good, actually, for someone who's bad at stealth. Uh, plus zero, so 15. The rest of you have a couple of seconds to prepare for whatever's about to happen. I will stand around... Where's the noise coming from? It's coming from this way. Right, so can I hide around the corner, just out of sight of the hallway? So, like, like right here-ish? Yeah. Okay. And I'm yeah. going to ready I will my greatsword. Maybe if the pile allows it, hide behind the pile of bodies? Um... Yeah, I think you could squeeze back there. Okay. It's also worth noting uh, that I can hold my breath for up to an hour, so I'm definitely doing that. You Make a stealth check. Sure. Right and what are you what are you gonna do for, to prepare once you Oh natural twenty. Ooh, very good. Um I'm gonna go stand 21. by Colt. Mm-hmm. Because he's big. Thanks. I'm little. Thanks. You're gonna hide behind him. <laughs> I wanted one shoe to just like stand in the middle of the hallway and face what's coming <laughs> all by himself. <laughs> I'm going to take out my greatsword and be ready. You want to gamble against one shoe? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I still have one shoe left. What you see coming around the corner as the dragging sound grows louder is there is a small, extremely hairy, goat-hooved creature. But somehow this like small creature, who is maybe like three, three feet tall or so, wild mass of mane of hair um, just all over the place um, and a big bushy beard and mustache and just like carrying one on each shoulder a goblin you wouldn't think that this something this small would have that strength but it apparently it does um, and I think it's time to everyone control the mission. okay Yeah, I need a card. Okay. Let's roll with a plus zero. Yeah. You still have uh, seventeen. I think I just have a plus one. I got a. <laughs> oh, give me give me another card. I forgot. Oh, sure. Blank card on the top. Thank you. Have a friend if we review attack things. <laughs> uh, yeah, how do we do? How do we do these other classes? <laughs> what? I was just looking up a couple spells. Have you heard sure. You go up first. I am. The, hmm? the, the slow with the turtle man. Yep. It's first thing initiative order. Plus zero dexterity. I rolled yeah. a 17. Nice. Uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll break my stealth here. I'm still going to hold my yeah. breath because you, it smells so bad. You see it come around like here. All right. Uh, I am going to just like peeking my head out from the pile of bodies, mm -hmm. see it coming, and then swing up onto my good friend uh, <laughs> Colt. Mm -hmm. Onto Colt's back, and then uh, ready in action. That when we're next to it, I will claw at it. Okay. All right. Uh, one shoot. Oh, one shoot. I'm going to cast True Strike. Okay. I'm also going to pull out my shield. Uh, Twenty-one. 
Does it make a saving throw, or is that an attack? Um, true strike. True strike true is a cantrip, and it affects an ally. I don't think it's a save. Oh, okay. It just like it, gives advantage on the next attack. Yeah. All right, who are you casting on? On the bad guy. No, you cast it on one of your allies, right? Oh, it's Maybe. an ally. I Let thought me check. Your magic grants you brief insight into the target's defenses. Let me check. Extend your hand and point finger at the target in range. On your next turn, you gain advantage on your first attack roll against the target, oh. provided this spell has Maybe an I've ending. Got it wrong. Hold on, I'm getting there. You should put there. Uh, it's called True True Strike. True Strike. One action, range 30 feet. You extend your hand and point the finger at a target in range. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's, yeah, it is you. So your next attack against it is at advantage. Yep. Okay. Who's next? Who do you can? Who did you target with that? Herself. Oh, herself. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, then it is Quintrith's turn. Quintrith kind of like ambles out, unslinging this long metal tube from her back that you've been wondering what the, that is this whole time. Kind of gets into position, puts like a wooden end of it firmly against her shoulder and takes aim and then squeezes something on it. And there's a loud BANG! <laughs> and as a player, I'm not surprised, but Yordle covers his ears. <laughs> And she crits. Oh, oh my god. god. Nice. See you later, friend. NPC <laughs> KO for the win. Yeah. <laughs> right. And if the loud retort of the musket that Quintrith fired didn't get this thing's attention, the giant, like, musket ball that is now lodged in its flesh surely did. Nice. So next up is oh then it's its turn. The monster's turn. Musket ball in its flesh. 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 Yep. It's flesh. Yeah. I'm the one with the shell here. Yeah, let's get one thing straight. If anyone's well, got you know, a shell, I got one shoe. You can't even reach a puddle with them during the show. No, I won't. Okay. Cody. Cody. He does. He likes to be held up. Uh, sure. <clears throat> The the creature, to be taken back at this, kind of hefts the two goblins and throws them at Quintrith <laughs> one after the other. What about you? Just like goblins. <laughs> Just like goblins. Uh, one. No, Quintrith. He's throwing him at Quentin? Yeah, he's yeah, throwing yeah, yeah, yeah. both at Quentin. Oh. Well. Uh, hold, hold on. Is Quentin within uh, five feet of me? No, Quentin of you? No. She yeah. stepped out of it. Okay. That's fine. Oh, because your feet? Yeah, I've got the protector class feature. Yeah, there you go. Is that? Yeah. Fighting style. That's what mm -hmm. it is. I'm not used to this keyboard. I can put my shield in the way if she were within five feet, but she's not. For uh, uh, projectiles? Mm. Or for melee attacks? Okay. Just attacks so that, anyone. That oh, ends its job. Okay. Uh, then it is cold. Yay! Alright. I'm gonna run over there. Mm -hmm. Up I'm gonna to take the, a claw swipe. the creature. And let let Yordle do his thing. That's a oh. good! <laughs> uh, I'll add it up just in case, but I don't think it's a hit. Um... Yeah, that's nine, so no. That does not do that. Cool. I'm gonna rage. Okay. <laughs> and... So mad. So it's like that very, very much very, like, raging bull kind of thing. The, like, steam out of the nostrils. <laughs> like the pawing the ground with my uh -huh. hoof. I'm gonna run over there, and I just take a two swipes with my greatsword. Okay. 
because I get two attacks. There you go. Yeah. I don't, I have to like double check what rage gets me. And the bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gauge gain levels as a barbarian as shown in the rage damage column. Here. No, I don't know what the extra. Look what the extra damage is, and I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm just gonna roll. I'm a Okay, first attack. What the hell? I can't even. Okay, that's a twenty-two. <laughs> so you can't read my dice. <laughs> don't use the scanlon. Yeah, dice. Scanlon dice is don't impossible to read. That hits. Twenty-two. All right, and I'm just gonna roll to hit for the second one as well. Okay. While he's looking at my damage for me. Uh, oh shit. Well, the second one's a 10. Isn't a great sword at 2d6? That misses. That's what you're looking for? Yeah, it's 2d6 plus 3, but then I get extra bonus damage. bonus from rage, so I'm not sure what that what it, that is yet. Yeah. level of barbarian gets 3 extra damage. So, plus 2d6 plus 6. Okay. Four, yeah. Yes. Yeah. For each one. But I only hit once. Okay. Ooh, okay, oh, so good. 16. Nice. 16 damage. Um, and that was my bonus and my movement and my action. So I'm good. And I'm going to kind of position myself so I'm like cutting him off. So he'd basically have to leave my threat range right if he wanted to yeah. get to okay. anyone else. Okay. So let's just put it. Gotcha. I don't think that'll work. Let's just do Yeah, that. just put him right yeah. behind me. Okay. Or share the spot. Yeah, that works. Uh, Malik. So. Seeing that negotiations are going well, uh, Blake will walk out of hiding and fire an Eldritch Blast at the figure. Okay. It's a little crowded over there. I'll stay where I am. Is and like uh, a blast of force mushrooms? Yes. I thought so. Are they poisonous mushrooms? They may be. Um, so I got a... I used my charisma modifier, I think, to use to do to hit, right? Mm-hmm. Plus proficiency, so that's plus yes. six. Yes. So I got a 19 and a 25. Those both hit. Okay. What, what are you using? Uh, Eldritch Blast. Blast. And I think oh, the damage is 1d10, if I'm not mistaken, at my level. Yep. Yeah, I don't plus think Plus your Prism modifier. Yep, yeah, because I got Agonizing yep. Blast. So I'm going to do each beam targeting him. And I got... So it's die roll plus charisma modifier, right, for the damage? So that's yeah. 16 damage total. Okay. As these two beams streak out. Okay. Pay me for his mouth with mushroom power. Trying to break the DM habit, isn't it? It is. <laughs> that's his job tonight. Yeah. Um. <laughs> You guys are all giving this like this hairy thing a, a pummeling, but it doesn't seem to be slowing much. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Yordle, you're back up. Okay. Uh, this time, I'm going to make two claw attacks against it. Nice. Uh, wow. Okay, one of those is probably hit. One of them might not be. So I've got a 14 and a uh, 16 plus 7. 20. A hit. Okay. So I've got a 14 and a hit. Uh, the hit will hit. The, four, the 14, <laughs> 14 will not. Okay. will <laughs> hit. Uh, so that is seven slashing damage from my claws. Uh, and I then. Oh, hang on. None of you have magic weapons, do you? I have a magic weapon. Okay. But oh, that's right. Yeah, because you're Elgin Plasm. But you two do not. Nope, no. And you don't? Okay. Oh, she didn't attack yet. Mine's oh, that's right. He, that's she's right. true strike. Yeah, this thing is barely phased at the moment. So, did the the mundane weapons have effect, or mundane? They attacks, they did, but not as much as it seems like. They should. Ah, I see. Uh, okay, good to know. Cool, because I don't uh, have any magic. But, then but the force damage did, right? The force damage, yeah, okay. that cool. that was completely good. And then when I hit him, I will mark him. Okay. So that means if he attacks anyone but me, or doesn't include me in a, in an attack he makes, then that attack does disadvantage. Okay. All right, uh, one shoot. Okay, so can I, um, can I do dissonant whispers to it? Uh, yes. Your... You, although that's, that's not an attack roll, so, like, you're not going to get the benefit of your, your strike. strike. 
Okay, well, let's try to attack it then, I guess, first. What are you attacking with? My longsword. Okay, right. So, I get advantage. <laughs> yeah, you can get advantage over here. <laughs> it's not very good. Um, so, that's 14. That was with advantage? Yeah. Uh, misses. Dang, okay. What was the hippopotamus' lady's name again? Quintress. Okay, so, Quintress, you're going to have to carry this fight. <laughs> uh, that's not the most cheering news I've heard all day. <laughs> <laughs> and she gamely, like, stows the, the long barrel and pulls out two smaller ones and aims very carefully and fires twice. Oh my god, I love this hippo. But she doesn't really have great line of sight to you because now she's got a giant centaur person blocking her way. I'm only a medium creature. Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm giant. Uh, so I think that thing has partial cover. Oh, but she crit again. Dang. She got a 20 and a 1, which is At like my specialty. Critting, not <clears throat> Your specialty, a 20 yeah. and a 1. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And she manages to, like, bend it a bit, send some of its fur, but it's still looking pretty good. Perhaps it's, it's, it should stop and consider a negotiation. Um, then it is going to oblige um, Yordle, and it takes this, like, this club out from seemingly nowhere, buried in its fur, and takes two whacks at you with it. Okay, we're looking for, what is my AC? Pretty high. 19. Okay. Yeah. Uh, armor of 17 plus the shield. Okay. So here's a 21 and a 25. Oh, two Jeez. hits? Yes. Uh-oh. Wow. Just like the bird. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 And you guys were going to fight a bunch, of, a bunch of these in the Feywild. But then you stole their spoons back. <laughs> or forks. Oh, that's what this thing is. Yeah. Oh. I think so. The tinny forks, yeah. Mm -hmm. you got back. They weren't theirs, they were ours. We stole our tinny forks back. That's right. Just one to fill. I think that's that might come with this Maybe. Because it's Psychic damage. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Take a 44 bludgeoning damage? Oh, I think oh. I'm unconscious. Are you Oh kidding? my goodness. Let's find out. Body changes. No. Uh, yep, I'm unconscious. I have 40 <gasps> HP. Oh my god. After this, another thing just seemingly pops up and swims out of the ground. Just Swim? like, swoop, and then just lands. Another of the same? Another of the same. And it says, and then this one, the one that you've been fighting, says, Truce, eh? Truce? <laughs> Truce? <laughs> uh, we yeah. got you outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think a truce is probably our, our wisest bet here. I'm going to pick the ordle off the ground. <laughs> Sling him over my back. I'll stabilize him, I guess, if we're yeah. working out a turn now. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're okay. If you guys want to be out of initiative order, if you want to. So. Okay. It's a waste of a rage. I can do healing word on him. You should. But I passed my first death save. <laughs> so. So either I can stabilize him or you can with magic. Did you like healing word? I He's unconscious. unconscious. <laughs> Please heal him. Yes. Please heal him. Okay, so. Um. 1d4 and spell modifier. Oh, yeah. Is it is my spell casting modifier a plus three? It's uh, plus it's plus three plus um, proficiency, right? Not for not for healing word. For healing word, it's just the modifier. Oh, it's just the modifier. Yeah. Okay. So do I roll it or do you? You roll it. You I do. You're a spell caster. Okay. So I wanted him to be responsible for his own <laughs> healing. What's he going to max, though? He didn't. No, five. <laughs> hey, it's better than zero. Not fifty, though. That's for sure. 
Um, so once Yordle picks himself up but jaggedly off the ground. Yordle I picked him up off the ground. Okay. I put him on my back. Once Colt picks Yordle up but jaggedly off the ground, <laughs> the thing says, <laughs> ah, uh, you go, uh, not a not match for me and my, my friend here, are you? But, uh, but you're more than them. That's interesting. You can do more, more than these usual invaders. You're you're after the star crystal, aren't you? <laughs> well, how would you know that? <laughs> That's what everyone who comes comes for. They all think they're gonna get rich, but mostly they just end up dead. <laughs> <laughs> we're not trying to get rich so much as we're trying to stop the kingdom from being destroyed. Ah, that's no concern of mine. But I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I don't often see folk with your unique abilities. And there's a gang of Galen Dor that uh, me and my buddy have been trying to get one over on for a long, long time. Was he trying to get one over on? The, uh, he called them Galen Dur. Galen Dur. Do I know what that is? Uh, some universe, make a, make a history check. That's what I'm a Can I make a history check? Sure. Um, I got a 16. That is caught. That's the same one. Yeah, well, it was... I think it was one of the things could have gone either way. Uh, it's seven. Okay. Um, you don't know a lot of specifics about them. I mean, you don't know, like, their nature or anything. Well, I mean, you don't know... You know their nature. That's it. Uh, they are a, some type of, like, sentient or elemental. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll nod. I'm just saying that. As I understand some of it. <laughs> So here's my proposal. Me and my buddies are a little bit short-handed for a full skirmish against the Gaelic Dur. But uh, with your numbers, we could make up a team. And maybe with your abilities, you might be able to beat them for once. If we win, you can have all the star crystal you want. And they are there. I'm going to roll insight on that. Yeah. I'm going to trust that I'm going to and say, well, that sounds like a mighty fine idea. I got an eight. He's a weird little, like, earth known creature. Or, okay. or earth day creature, it's hard to... Seems fair. It's hard to trust anything in these people at their work. Okay. How many Gale of Dur are there? Will you show us the star crystal before? If we can't even defeat you... Hold on, hold on, on. one at a time, please. <laughs> <laughs> one shoe, would you mind casting Mending on my shell? I think it's cracked. <laughs> sure, no How problem. many are there? Well, uh, I'm going to call one up, and then... My friend here is going to call a second one up, and each of those gate up there is probably going to animate a couple of their own. So I six all told. Six is the usual team size, and then there's the two of us plus the four from five. And Quint says, "Hands and girl, stay off this one." Yeah, good, good. Then uh, six, six versus six. That's a perfect match. If you can't defeat these, what makes you think we can? If we can't even defeat you. Well, this time Come along, and I'll explain. Me. And he takes you down the path that he came from. Follow me, follow me. I'll explain everything. <sighs> All right. Okay, so I'll touch your shell. Fix it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, that looks a lot better there. <laughs> no more cracks in my shell. Can I roll survival to see if I find any nice mushrooms for sure. chicken? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Um, I'm sure more or less all Zach cares about. <laughs> Mushroom Dancer on a thir uh, 13? Uh, there's a pile of bones over on the far side of the wall where there are, are also some mushrooms growing between the bones. So as we're walking and following this guy, you guys see like this mage hand come out and like, <laughs> as we're walking, it's like picking mushrooms for me and putting them in this pouch. I don't care. All right, off we go to the rocker room. Oh boy, all right. And he leads you to a, it's kind of a strange place because it is a, it's like a roundish room, this like oblong room. And that, at the back side of it is a hot spring, a natural hot spring that's right there. He says, why don't you rest your bruised bones <laughs> in the hot springs while I make ready and explain what we're up against. Well, that just sounds like a perfect idea. And I just, like, go in my shell and hold my breath underwater <laughs> for an uh, hour. So you guys can all take a short, a short rest here in the rock room. Okay. 
don't really know what that is. <laughs> you may not. I didn't get hit. I didn't. I'm going to take that time to kind of thing? view the scene and, and the area around us and see if there's anything notable. Is there good? is. Aside from what he's pointing out. Yeah. There, it, carved into the wall mm -hmm. is like a set of cubby holes. Um, I also have cure wounds. Okay. And inside oh, those it. cubby holes okay. are. For when we need it. There's a bunch of strips of cloth, and in another mm -hmm. one is a set of mm -hmm. what look to be kind of ve very very like finely sure crafted rods. Rods? Like mm -hmm. perfectly cylindrical rods. Yeah. There's a set of five of them, just like stacked neatly. Yeah. Can I inspect those? Uh, yeah. Okay. What are you looking to learn about them? Wendy. Are they magic or um, um, maybe what their purpose is? Make an arcana check? Sure. Uh, oh, that's good. I got a twenty-four. Okay. You. So I'm not gonna. I can't give you everything that I would give you with the tech magic, but based on the feel and based on like the clearly, there's there's some like quasi sacred uh, quality to these. The way that they are very carefully stacked and carved and smoothed out. They're like very different than everything else here, which is made of like roughly hewn Sure, stuff. sure. Uh, you think that these probably are magical in some way, but you have no idea what the purpose is. So if I could spend the short rest attuning, or not attuning, but like inspecting them, would that give me more insight? Um, no, it wouldn't give you more insight than the core is about to give you. Okay, sure. Yep. Then I'll yeah. just look around more, but other than that, that's good Does for me. spending the short rest in the hot spring give me one hit point? Because that way I can be at full. <laughs> sure, sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, you gained that much? Wow. Oh, you spent all almost die. all my hit dice. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I see. If uh, I had one more point, I'd get one, one shot. We'll see. And Co the Chorid says <laughs> Have any of you ever heard of the fine sport of Earth Ball? No, but I reckon we're about to. <laughs> That's right. It's been a sore point between me and my friends that we've never been able to beat the game up there at Earth Ball. <laughs> And that's where you all are coming. Oh god, team. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, Earth Ball is a simple game. Your friend there has already found the rods that we used to play. Uh, there's five of them. And uh, they they start in the center of the arena. We uh, Each team starts at their own goal. And uh, the goal of Earth Ball is to take three of those rods and get them back to your own goal. Now, a team of six, there's two runners, there's um, two blockers, one goaltender, and uh, one kind of versatile fellow who can be anywhere, go do anything. The catch is, only the runners are able to move with a rod in hand. You can take one if you can wrest it from somebody else's grasp, but once you got it, if you're not a runner, you won't be going anywhere fast. So there's, there's runners, there's a goalkeeper. There's uh, there's two blockers. Oh, the blockers have to stay with the runners. They're kind of kind of a package deal. One blocker, one runner. I reckon you're a runner and I'm a blocker. Or I could be the ball. <laughs> uh, no no ball in the earth ball. I don't know where you get that idea. There's just these, <laughs> just these five rods. That's all they got. <laughs> Can that be the episode title? Please, <laughs> no there's no ball in it. We'll see. Oh my god! Oh, that's the best line. <laughs> those are those sashes there. You'll you'll wear those, and they kind of attune with the rods to let the rods know who's what. Uh, what else is there? What else is goaltender's got to stay within twenty feet of the goal, and if you're a blocker, you can't. You shouldn't be too far away from your honor for too long. Else you'll get zapped right back. You be a runner, I'll be your blocker. How about I never leave your butt leave leave your back? <laughs> what? Now what do you two butt. folks I'll be a gold reckon friend. you ought to be? Sounds good to me. Well since I'm little that plan has worked so far. Are there any restrictions of any kind? No, nope, not a lot of rules in Earth Ball. I explained most of it to you. What do you and your friend typically do? Ugh, well, it's hard to get 
the rods out from the Caleb Durr's grass, being as they're so strong and made of rock. So they tend to kind of come up to us and take our rods, and then there's not much we can do about it. Let's see. Also, the Caleb Durr, you got to watch out for the way they'll slam you. If one of them boulder men runs right into you, you'll be knocked for a loop. Take you, take you a bit to get back to your feet. Well, we have our own tricks, I'm sure. That's what I need you for. We gotta win <laughs> for the Corrid Pride and for your star crystal. Which is for the kingdom. Yeah. When does this game begin? As soon as you folks feel like you're ready. Me and my buddy will summon the game there and they'll summon their... Did Quintrell tell, Quintra tell us how many she needs? Uh, Quintra told you that she would need about five pounds worth. Five pounds? Yeah. So we just have to get three of the sticks to our goal area? Easier said than done. There's only Double five. Checking off the goals. Yes. But you gotta get three. Where's the arena? Oh, I'll take you there. It's and not the far. Holds sticks. You take a look. Uh, runners hold the sticks. Runners run with the sticks. Oh. What happens when you get it to your goal area? Oh, you stick it in the goal, and there it stays until... Can it get stolen? Oh, sure. That's why, we got the, a goalkeeper. that's why the goalkeeper's there. Okay. Mm. You're the goalkeeper? Oh. Yeah. Oh, dear. Problem with that? Yes, I have very many problems with that. Your shoe's untied. First of all, you're missing a shoe. <laughs> uh, Yordle takes off one of his shoes and gives it to one of you and says, Not much use for shoes when your horse friend has four. And gives you his shoe. Two shoes. You do realize it's just a name, guys. <laughs> oh, well, all the same, you could have my shoe. <laughs> it's a pretty big one to fill. My feet are actually kind of tight. My brain feels like it's shrinking. <laughs> Put my secret memories. Uh, I may have moved them up onto that puzzle bit right there behind the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Them. I see them. <laughs> he says, "Oh, okay." Before he finds them. Are those the rods? These are the rods. Yeah. They're square. The deal with these is. <laughs> Whoever has a rod, I'm going to place you on top of it. Nice. So that you know that who sense. has the rods. Yeah. Okay. So, come and place yourselves where you want to be on this side. Okay, so you're a goalkeeper. Do we have any sort of setup here? time? Don't know what you mean. Can I do something before the game? Oh, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I have Magic Circle. So I can use that. To prevent them from coming in, like, ward against elementals? Mm -hmm. That feels broken. Can I do that? It's not broken, though. Keep them away from the goal. So they keep them away from their goal. <laughs> keep them away from our goal. We probably can't go onto their side, can we? Yeah, we can. That's how we steal the rods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how that works. Oh. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it would be... I didn't hear anything in the rules. But it's not against the rules. But do it's it. It's not very sports. Perhaps you create a zone. It's also one of my level three spells I took. Perhaps you create a zone in the center of the field that they can't run through, but we can. That's advantageous, but it's not unsportsmanlike. <laughs> Is saving the kingdom worth being sportsman sportsmanlike for? I should say so. <laughs> got the, the king of rules over here, rule enforcement. Nice but it's word. not against the rules to block them from their goal. And I don't care a lick about sportsmanship. Do it. <laughs> the knight's word is his honor. <laughs> so you guys do this, I'll right. just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so would we like a magic circle at our goal, their goal, or the middle? Well, we're trying to get our rods back to our goal. So if anything, we'd want it on their goal so they can't bring rods in. Yeah, that would be the most. <laughs> yes. Okay, can I do that, Nick? And it's just... Can I walk over there and put a magic circle down? Um, let's see. How long does it take to cast? One minute. That's why I asked if I can do this before the game. Right. Mm. 
If yeah, not, it'd still be yeah. advantageous to put a magic circle somewhere. Somewhere in the on the map. I agree. Yeah. Even if it's not around yeah. their goal. Around our goal or around our goal so they can't steal stuff once we've taken yeah. it. Actually, around our goal would be good. It's, it's not even a concentration spell, is it? Nope. Oof. Um, I'm thinking how I could use minor illusion to make you think that they would have some already in their goal. Mm -hmm. See, when I took this spell, my, if we have to fight something, maybe I'll like block a barricade a door with it, and we can run away or something. Mm. Get time to set up. Oh, Not one a second. sport game, but it works. <laughs> one second. Yes. A ball uh, game with no balls. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> and it's called Earth Ball, not Dirt Ball. <laughs> <sighs> That's the best part of the explanation. Not sure we can get that idea. <laughs> Nick, did you come up with Earth Ball? Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, yes. You can you can set that up. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I will walk over to the... What are their names again? Gale of Dur? Yeah, the Gale of Dur. I'll walk over to their goal area. And They're I'll not really here yet. What's what's happening while you're doing that is these two are like kind of off to one side, and they're like dancing with each other. Okay. So and while they're dancing, mm -hmm. I will spend a minute setting up a 10-foot radius circle around their goal. Okay. And block elementals. Uh, can you draw that out? Oh, I, I will. Markers here. Sure. Oh boy. The other thing is our Donna Bear Fair over here. Never mind. Yep. I'm gonna say our. What's it? What's the spell Rinse called? Spell. I'm doing magic circle. Magic circle. It's gonna cover this area. Well, I guess it would just be. Let me do the square. Since you're using squares. Uh, or circle's good. Circle. So you okay. see Malik place mushrooms down in a circle, <laughs> and uh, he spends about a minute, and then a magic circle appears. Are those mushrooms going to give you away? Hmm? <laughs> and that lasts an hour. Okay. And then these guys finish their dance, and when they do, um, two Galeb Dura appear, and they set to work working on nearby boulders and they, they like, like uh they look like animated boulders they like, look like they look like stone palaces mm -hmm. basically oh they look like that like that my mini over there yeah that's not confusing at all yeah they, they look like this essentially um okay. and each of them animates two boulders which are just animated boulders but like they essentially are their own teammates are they the same like are the t are those two okay. parent boulders right, the same as all the child boulders pause mm -hmm. we're offline oh I okay, I was wondering if the one that they were bigger or smaller than the other. Yeah. 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 These things super be super connected. careful about Sorry the. No worries. I do this all the time. time. So. You can use back. another piece of tape if you need to. Uh, I hope you have to be disconnected, reconnecting now. Yeah, well, we should be back soon. Okay. You keep hitting the table. Yep. <laughs> it's like every time. <laughs> 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 And it looks like we're back. Okay, cool. Maybe. All right. So, what was your question? Oh, I was wondering if if they were all exactly the same. Like, if we could tell, like, one of them was bigger and stronger than the others, or if they were all exactly the same. Two of them have like faces, have like crevices in their in the front part of them for like eyes and a mouth, mm -hmm. like that many. Yeah. Yeah, like that many. And then, but the four boulders that they animate don't. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Well, those must be the balls in Earth Ball. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make a lick of sense. We don't play with those balls. We are, in a sense, playing with those balls, considering you play with your right. opposing team, and they are balls. Let me know when y'all are ready to start. So, are we... Okay, oh, so we we have goalie, we have runner, runner blocker, undecided. And what are our two friends doing? Um, one of them is going to be a runner also, and one of them is going to... Wait, do we have an undecided? I'm, I'm undecided. Okay, then you can be either be a blocker or a versatile. Um, what is the versatile? I think they, I'll can, do... they can 
do whatever. Basically, <laughs> the the only thing they can't do is run the ball. I think I'll do versatile because I'm not. I have eight springs, so I'm not really going to do much if I put wrestle one of them. Uh, but I might be able to. And some only damage. Ones who can move when they're holding the stick is the runners, right? Yes. Okay. Everyone else is going to have zero speed when you're holding that. That's a rod. So yes. basically, you could steal the rod, but then you're stuck there, and a runner would yeah. have to come and grab yeah, it for you. So I would ask the. Uh, are we online again? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would ask the. What's those creatures' names again? Go. Go the chords. The chords. I would ask. The chords versus the Gaelic. Okay. I would ask the chord that was explaining things. And we can attack the enemy team, right? Any oh, absolutely. means necessary. We do it all the time. Okay. I see. Of course, you seem kind of flimsy, so <laughs> I might not want to provoke that sort of response. We'll see. If and you know it's good for you. We'll see. And if if one of them, if have you seen anyone die playing this game? You've seen those goblins up there, right? I see. The worst teammates I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull this back a little bit after. What? The goblins the worst teammates I've ever had. Those oh, worst. Okay. <laughs> Is the camera okay? I just, I just pulled the map okay. back because I pulled it to draw the circle. Uh, yeah, camera's fine. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll do versatile. Okay. Me too. I'm pretty excited for Earth Ball. Uh, but I do need to look at one of my spells. Do we want to keep our same initiative board or roll again? I don't have, we don't have that much time. <laughs> roll again? We don't have that much time, crap. so I'd rather keep it. Okay. Okay. Let's just keep it. It's fine. Yeah. It's got like 40 minutes. So I, I rolled crap, but okay. All right, y'all set? Suppose so. Okay. so. There are 80 feet from the goal to the center, which is where all the rods start. And the arena is 60 feet wide. Yeah. I can take care of moving the map for you if you want. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. Alright, then we are going to start off with your as your core ed friend says, Flava! <laughs> <laughs> Yorba gets really excited and hops up onto uh, his friend, Colt, mm -hmm. and then um, pulls out the shield and the lance and says, all right, I'm ready to block. Uh, and holds a lance action in case uh, we get within 10 feet of a gate of door from the enemy team. Okay. All right. One shoot. Okay, so they're all the way at the other side. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm going to hold an action for if they... Um, Come to me, I want to cast Hypnotic Pattern. Okay. And if that... What do you mean by it come to you? If come they're within, near me, if range they come within range. Okay. Alright. Then it is the Gale of the Durst. What's the range of that? Uh, 120 feet. Oh, nice. Oh, they're within range they're now. They're within range then. now. Right? Oh, wait, wait. Inside a 30-foot cube. Well, see, the range is 120 feet, so you can cast it anywhere within 120 feet of yourself. And then when, once you cast it, everyone oh, within a 30-foot cube... Catch all of them. So if you do it now, okay. you can get all six of them. Oh, I thought I thought it was farther away. Okay, let's do it. All right, yes. go for it. Well, I mean, it's a third. It's a it's third a level spell. So saving throw from each of them. Wait, you said 120 feet? Yes. Plus a 30 foot cube on top of you're that. You're right. You're so. right. Yeah, yeah. You can still get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So each of them have to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh gosh. Forward if she had to. Which That's true. is. She can move a little bit, but enough. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Yeah, they won't shoot. 14? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Spell safety. 8 plus 3 plus 3. 8 yeah. plus 6, yeah. 14. Okay. Well, so the low levels again. These are the two runners. <laughs> I don't know. A 17 and a 4. The 4 is a fail. Yeah, so one of the runners is under the hit. What's your. Um, what's your last? It's 14. Uh, it's okay. concentration up to 1 minute. Okay. Nice. So you can run up there. It's 14. The blockers uh, both fail. Nice. Oh boy. Uh, the versatile one fails. And the goalie fails. <laughs> wow! So only one save? Only one save. Yeah. yeah. So what happens uh, on their turn when you. They can't move 
with each creature who sees the pattern uh, on a failed save, the creature becomes charmed for the duration. While charmed, the creature is inca incapacitated, incapacitated and has a speed of zero. <laughs> yeah, they're not immune to charm. But it ends if any of them take damage or if someone else uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor. Okay. All right. One of the Aelidur, one of the runners, kind of like pulls its arms in and starts rolling forward. And it gets... Let's see. How long does the circle last? Is that? Oh, it's an hour. It's an hour. It's an hour. <laughs> yeah, it gets up to the rods, but it's out of action because it uses it's, it's use, it uses move and it's dash. And then it looks behind it and it's. <laughs> uh, then it is the Korit's turn, and we have one Korit runner, right? Yeah. Okay. One one runner, one blocker. Okay. And then I'm versatile. Okay. So so these two have to stick together because you guys are paired up, and so they are also. Mm -hmm. That makes that's that's good because that'll make keeping track of things easy. And they also tear off. But they don't have an action to take it. It's, it takes an action to remove a rod from the center or to place it back. Oh, okay. Can anyone grab a rod or just the runners? And anyone can grab it. Okay. But only if you're not a runner it. and you, you have can. a rod, your speed is zero. Gotcha. Shut up. All right. Then it is cold start. Cool. Uh, how far is it up to the rods? 80 feet. Okay. Um, well, I will, I will move up to the rods. Okay. Get me within 10 feet. Since I'm going to have to dash to do that, mm -hmm. can I go around to the other side so that he has he can reach? Oh, yeah. How, how far can you move? I can move If I dash, I can move 100 feet. 100 feet. So, yeah, so you can easily get up to about here. Yeah. And then you can stab. Yep. And then I'm going to bonus action range. Okay. 21. That hits. Uh, ooh. Yeah, big damage. Six. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Six piercing damage from my lance. So just bah! And Yordle says, Oh my, I didn't expect that to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Then it is Malik. Okay. Is it Malik or Malik? I, I thought it was Malik, but you can call it either. Okay. Um Okay. I thought my name was Malik, but whatever. <laughs> what your name is? No, no, no. No, he's making fun of you. You see the way you worded it. You said I thought it was Malik. As he speaks to his patron, as the patron asks, uh, let's see here. Uh, where is my speed? It should be thirty, right? So I'm gonna move my speed forward. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that leaves me one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm just thirty-five away from hitting in my opening. Um, reach in the rod. Can I reach in the rod? Nothing in the rules against it. Because it's an action to have main hand. So, so and then you can give it to to Colt. Or I can just pull it, right? Or but I, you can't. But I can't move. Can he move if he's versatile? Uh, so, yes. So the versatile people can do anything except they can't carry rods. I mean, they, they that's, can't well, move. that's what I was just asking. Yeah. So can he move while he is holding the rod. Yes. Oh no. While while he has while the mage hand has the rod, he can't move. But I can do mage hand and like whip it around like this. Yeah, that's true. When I was expecting him, can I do I think that the mage hand can carry it? Are they light enough? Like ten pounds? Um yes. Okay, so then sure. Okay, I can do that. Mage hand what's the range of mage hand? It's thirty feet, I think. Thirty? Okay, so yeah, I will mage hand a rod. Mm hmm And I can grab it this turn and then just whip it around behind me. Okay. Thirty feet. Can you also man manipulate it the same turn? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. Much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. makes, that makes mean, sense. I don't know sure. if you can. So I got it. Okay. I would assume you can. Well, I can look it up. So worst case is I'll just pick it up, and then best case is I'll put it back here. So let me read the text, and we can keep going. Okay. Just for the uh, sake of time. Jason, if you throw it to me, can I put it in our goal? Can yeah. a goaltender put it in the goal? Nothing in the rules against it. You just can't move. Yeah. Throw it. Toss right. it to me, and yeah. I'll toss it in our goal. I'll look it up, though. It says you can move the hand up to 30 feet each time you use it. Yeah. So it's from me to it, then, right? 
or does it just kind of? Yeah, you, you would, you would be able to move away. the hand up to the rods at this, oh, during this turn. Mm -hmm. Well, you can summon. No, it. you can summon it next to the rods. Oh, okay. And then move it thirty feet. So, okay, so back you can bring a rod to you. Yeah. Okay. Is that what you're doing? Um. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on a rod there. Sure. Okay, so then I guess that will be my turn for now. So the next person can go. Okay. The next person is Yordle. Yordle will uh, grab the rod, because that takes an action, mm -hmm. and pass it to Colt. No, you hold it. So oh, I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You hold yeah. it. I will hold on to this rod and, and you can hold on to it. Withdraw into my shell. <laughs> <laughs> Granting me a plus four to AC. Awesome, awesome. Just yeah. take the rod with me. And go yes. the, remember when I said that's oh that's gonna be really good. This is the exact interaction I was thinking about. So I, I kind of imagine that Yodel has straps into uh -huh. his shell yeah. on Colt. On my saddle. So that he can't fall off when he does this. Okay. He kind of like swings the shield yeah, onto yeah, his yeah. chest. Yeah. We've got it all worked out. One, one shoe, what's up? Oh, do I get a bonus to AC too if I have like a shell on my back? No, you don't. Uh, but <laughs> I do mark him when I attacked him. Yeah. So he, uh, he yeah, has disadvantages, disadvantages yeah. to hit you. So. Nice. This is great. Oh man. And and moving away, you would be the one provoking. So Well he'd have disadvantage anyway because of my totem. That's true. Okay. He has disadvantage from all sorts of things. Yeah. But it's not your turn. One shoot. Yep, yep, yep. Um, just don't do anything concentration because what you have right now is so I know. <laughs> what you have right now just broke the game. You broke the game. I thought you broke I the thought game. I thought I was breaking it. <laughs> you <laughs> both <laughs> broke it. We all broke it. <laughs> This is how you think outside the box. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, okay, I'm going to hold an, hold an action on my long sword in case one of those boulders comes near me. I mean, sure. Um, then it's the Gale of Durf's turn. <laughs> it, is, it takes a rod, and then it rolls. Cool, I'm going to attack it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Make your... So I know you have Sentinel. I do. Although it would be an opportunity attack anyway. Yeah. But yeah, but, even if he disengaged, I'd be able to attack yeah. him. But you can, reduce, you can reduce his speed to zero. I can! With oh, Sentinel. That's why I'm saying it. That's another That's 20. That's another 20! <laughs> oh my god. And I'm raging! Oh my god. Uh, oh my god. What, okay. a, what a game of Earthball this is. I forget commentators. <laughs> that Colt's not holding anything back. <laughs> this one's got Moxie. <laughs> Oh, That's 19 points of damage. Okay. Um, in a froth forming at the tip of his mouth. Let's see. My short hand pronounced. Dribbling. What did you say, 19? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did your attacks kind of magical in your raging? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Alright. So it takes slightly less. Because we're only level 5 and we didn't have yes. found any magical. I have magic weapons. You have not been issued any magic weapons by the king. Nope. The king doesn't love me that much. The king yes. doesn't give us magic weapons after this. I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I think the king is on to me. Okay. <laughs> but you do hit him, and, and it, Are you the like, royal mushroom? It can't, mushroom it can't go anywhere. It can't go anywhere. Right you've, you've got, like, got your affiliation with the court. How did you hit it? With my great sword. Yeah, okay. So, I think, basically... I think you slammed the scale door, door with your great sword with such force <laughs> that it's, like, impacted the ground. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which yeah. Which is hard to do when you're this creature made of living stone. I'm so glad I got to attack me too, because oh, that means I get so to good. keep my rage yeah. for another round. That's great. All right, then it's the chorus turn. Um, this one takes a rod and starts. They both start running back. Nice. Okay. Let me make sure I gave them the full. Yeah. That's all they do. And both of them are like laughing and cackling the whole time. <laughs> Look at how dumb they are! <laughs> Colt, it's your turn. So here's a question. Uh huh. Uh, can you, is there any rule against carrying more than one at once? Yes. More than one rod? Yes, a runner can only have one rod. Doesn't okay. matter if I'm carrying one of the rods. Well, 
Well, because a runner can only have more than one run. run. Yeah. What about other pe people? Can they carry more than one run? <laughs> Try and find out. All right. Well, I'm going to use my action to pick the rod, the last rod up out of the pile. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to book it back to the goal because okay. I can move 100 feet. Uh-huh. Because okay. I can dash as a bonus action. Nick, I'm sorry, those minis are so messy. Because of my eagle totem. And as we go by, as we go by Malik, can you grab his mage handed? Well, I'm already holding like something, something in yeah. my shell, so no. So no? Okay. Then never mind. We'll just but not that we need it, right? Because we have three. Well, we have two now. And, and then the they have one. Then we need they have one and you have one. So I was just thinking we could so, end the game right now. Oh, I see. Well, wait, we don't need all five? We need, you need just three. 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 Yeah. He's gonna fling it at me and then you win. Because he's holding Yeah, but yeah, I was just thinking on my turn to. we could end it. But right. that's uh, cool. We got two. Yeah. Must slam it in the goal. Oh, is it another action? It's another action. Okay. So yeah, okay. So we're there. So so I have to use my action to move the hand again, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna use my action to move the hand another thirty feet okay. backwards. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then okay. I'm gonna Dismiss it? Can I dismiss it without using an action? And yeah, then that's fine. Move? Okay, so I'm going to move. Oh, you can move. I don't have, and I'm going to drop it. No. Drop he, the rod. If he dismisses the hand and drops the rod. He's just dropping then, it on the ground. Then does my yeah. speed go back up to yeah. normal? Or is it oh, on? actually it would, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm going to move. One, two, rules. three, four, five, six. <laughs> Which we are continuously finding ways to break. <laughs> <laughs> Not break. Yeah. Get around. Yeah. Loopholes. And I will cast Hexblade's Curse on this guy next to me. <laughs> Haven't you done enough? Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, clearly we have not. And, what, uh, that, that's a saving throw? That, that's just a bonus action. It just happens. Oh, oh, there's, so there's no save at all. Okay, nope. Cool. Nope, he just cursed now. All right, he's cursed. And I get a bunch of bonuses now to him <laughs> if he tries to do anything or okay. if he just moves away from me. Nice. Yordle. And then oh. I'm done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Yordle from inside oh. the shell. Now, you use your bonus, your action. You I was going to pull my weapon out. I wanted to make sure I have my weapon out, oh. but yeah, sorry. Yordle uses a bonus action to come out of his shell. Okay. Yes. And when he does, he's holding a longbow. And he's just going to shoot at the... You're not going to use your action to put the... Oh, do I have to down? use an action to put yes. it in? Yes. I thought since we were in the goal area. Okay, then no. I use my action to put it in. And then I action surge to longbow. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, yes. Nice job. You could have, like, done both. <laughs> action surge. Yeah, action surge. <laughs> and it, it, like, glows this, like... This vibrant green as it slides into the goal. Uh, that's a miss and a nineteen. Nineteen what? Okay. Uh, I get no bonus to this because I have zero dexterity, so that's eight damage. Okay. Roll for max damage. Have nice. done four. And Jordan says, "And that's how we play Earth Ball, where I'm from." <laughs> <laughs> uh, one shift. Um, can I, uh... One shoe. If, one shoe. If you have no plan, kick me. Just kick me. Just do it. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I kick was going to see if I could grab the rod and put it in. The goal. But is that two actions? One to grab it and one to grab it? No, I don't think so. Pass oh, to pass it, if I pass yeah. it to you? It takes an action to pull it out from the center because it's like a magical thing, and it takes an action to stick it in. What about the picking goal. it up from the ground over there? Would that be an action? No. Okay. So I'll okay. Go, I'll yeah, go I'll pass you the. I can pass you the thing, or are you just gonna go pick it up? I'll go get that. No, one. don't go pick it up because then you won't be able to move. Here, I'll pass you mine. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the rod from her and put it in the goal. <laughs> it passes. So you put it from in. him. <laughs> a bright yellow light. Now. Glows from the rod. Okay. Somehow this seems ominous all of a sudden. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Right. But yeah. the rules say we have to put it in the goal. <laughs> uh, then it's the Galen Durr's turn, and it's gonna try and leave your. I'm gonna make a attack of opportunity. Okay, that. go for it. All right. Yes. That's Ooh. probably gonna hit. So twenty something. Yeah, well, yeah, that hits. Okay. I'm yes. gonna roll damage. Uh, with my, you guys see him wield a magic flail. The head is like a mushroom yeah. shape with spikes coming out of it. 
that tracks. <laughs> and it is uh, which damage is that? Really like Ten things. magic bludgeoning. Good. Nice. Okay. Does there is there any other? Can, can you stop it from moving? No, I can't. Okay. Then not, it, then not it this moves. turn. <laughs> it rolls again, tucking the rod under it, and goes. It's fine. It won't give it to his goal. <laughs> That's its full turn. Okay. <laughs> you guys, it's not gonna matter. You guys have to win. Uh, it's been the cord's turn. <laughs> One, two, three. Yordle says, "Stop. We can do this ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> don't put it in there." <laughs> they don't have the movement to do that. Oh. <laughs> they would have to dash to get there, and then they wouldn't have an, an action to do it. So, but they stop and say. <sighs> Pride. <laughs> this is <laughs> turtle pride. Um, it's it's turtle. Power. Turtle. One, one, of, one of the actually brings out a club and starts to attack you. Who does? One uh, of the yeah, one of the yeah. chords. Bring it on! Come on! Uh, I'm going to I'm impose like, my shield. Using hyper rage. Hyper rage. Let me figure out what that does. No, let him get me. I got this. Oh, okay. I well, see that. I see that Colt really wants to be hit, and I just <laughs> like I guide the club to his face. <laughs> you like, like I have like steam coming yeah. out of my nose. Uh, Come on! <laughs> what's your AC? Thirteen. Uh, well, they, is right they both here. hit then. Yes. Uh, can I can I impose my reaction on one of them? Uh, yeah, if you want one of them, we'll definitely miss. Uh, let me see what my reaction does exactly. Um. I impose disadvantage on the attack. Oh, okay. So let's see. So I get my shield in the way. Okay. I let the, let the first one hit, and I see that it persists the rage, and I'm like, okay, now it's time to stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was all you need. That's <laughs> so one hit, and then the second one has disadvantage? Yep. Okay. Well, it still hits. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, my AC is only 13. Slow. Yeah. My turtle arm just can't. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> <miss. laughs> well, Sorry. I tried. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> I tried. It was a good idea. <laughs> you really can take me. Take a uh, 35 bludgeoning damage. Alright. I think it's half, though, you right? It down. I do have it because I'm raising. 17. Yeah, 17. So that was 17 damage? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me that. I'm good. And it snarls at you. Let the, let the courage win! Let the courage win! We're on your team! <laughs> We're only playing by the rules! Pride. Pride. <laughs> but then it's your turn. <laughs> Alright. Um, you should pick him up and throw him. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> will you allow me to pick up one of the cords and throw him on my back? And push your uh, yordle off as like a free action. Uh, the cord would resi resist. He would time. resist it. Yeah. Then yeah. it wouldn't be a free action. No, I don't think so. Okay, fuck that. I'll go over and pick up the the stick. Mm -hmm. The last rod. Yep. Okay. And I'll bring it back to the goal. <laughs> and I will hold it out mm -hmm. for the. For the motherfucker who wants to finish oh, it. Oh, so you don't place it in? Nope. I'm going to hold it out it. for him. Right next to the goal. So all he literally has to do is move up to it and slam dunk. Okay, so you hold it out. And this Corrid, who is not the runner, walks up and takes it and sticks it in. Yep. Yep. That's exactly it. <laughs> Here. I'm like bleeding. Yeah. And it... It like glows this... Sort of like bright, vibrant pinkish color, and the chorus spins around and says, "Ha ha, we need you, we need you." <laughs> Your and joins in and just quietly says, "That's right, suck it." <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear Quench just say, oh, "Blimey!" As those of you still watching Gold see the 
the rods kind of like start to fuse and they form this crystalline shape. I knew this was a bad idea as soon as we got to the second rod. And Quinta says, that's it! That's the stuff! Take it! Are you sure it's a bad idea or a good idea? I can't be sure. <laughs> so I'll walk back and I'll, if no one else does it, I'll grab the magical thing. Alright, you now have a fairly heavy chunk of star crystal in your possession. Okay. Are you sure your noodle arms are capable of carrying that? <laughs> no. Here. Let me flex my total gun. <laughs> flex them this way, please. Total is my favorite. Yordle the turtle. My name is Yordle. Yordle, yeah. Oof. Yeah, I'll carry that. Yordle the turtle is my favorite. I think by this time, the two Korids have, like, wandered over to the other side, and they're like, poking <laughs> the uh, the Gala Burris who are still like in a stupor. Like, ah, not so good now, are you? <laughs> the other one's like trying to get into the goal, but the magic circle prevents yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Just like walking over what and over into the barrier. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> 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 Star Chris that you have back to Quinko. He mm -hmm. says, Good, good, good. This is exactly what I need to fix the helm of our, of our star jammer. No, we don't have much time to lose, I, I don't think. We, we'd better be on our way. Especially before this game of Dury has it been had. <laughs> <laughs> what a show that game was! <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, just, let's get back, shall we? I'm sure if you tell your Lady Riot about it, she'll write a rock song. Perhaps. Uh, I hope not. Dreadful song, she sings. <laughs> oh well, I'm a bard. Maybe I can teach her <sighs> a few things. <laughs> Alright, I guess we will, uh, leave. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm worried about the town. Yeah. By the time you reach town, things are in an interesting state, but not an unrecoverable one. Um, about half the town at this point has started to listen to Riot's ideas. <laughs> and have started to believe her when they say, listen, if you all band together, if we form a true people's anarchy, the king can't do shit about it. <laughs> oh dear. Half of them believe it. The other half are the, like kind of well-to-do people who are like, who like the way things are right now. Believe in law and believe in the divine, um, the divine lineage that holds the, the kingdom together, and they're not so keen on this. But she's working on them. By the time you get back, uh, listen, you people who are listening to Riot, the king may not be able to do shit about it, but I guarantee you that my friend Colt here can do shit about it. So, if you might want to reconsider your current position, uh, Miss Riot, uh, your ship should now be ready soon. No. Oh. Yes. We can leave? Mm -hmm. Momentarily. Quinter, you're back! Oh my god, I was so bored! <laughs> oh, I hate these prawns. Can we leave soon? Fifteen minutes to go, by the way. Yeah. According to my alarm. Yes, yes, I know I can make preparations. We can be uh, back in the Flogiston by the morrow. Don't forget to sign your paperwork on the way out. Ah, stop it. <laughs> okay. Panic! All panic! Come on, we're leaving! <laughs> That's against the rules. And she starts to gather up her crew, and they, and like by the next morning, Riot has lost all interest in this hobby of hers, and is just kind of like pacing back and forth outside the ships, like, "Is it ready yet? Hunter, what is the hold up?" I keep a very close eye on them until they're gone. Yeah, and I guess you guys see them off. Um, they all, Quinta finishes the repairs. She like um, mends the the helm. The like magical helm that they used to travel through the stars with the, the star crystal that you guys all won for her in the game before the fall. And the you watch as everyone reboards the ship pretty much in the order they left it. Um, and the Barracuda fins like flap a couple times 
just back and forth as the craft slowly starts to rise, seemingly powered by nothing. And then it kind of like tilts a bit and off like a shot. It's like a twinkle in the distance. And you can only see it as a speck in the sky. Hmm. Team lights blasting off again? <laughs> <laughs> And the kingdom is saved, thanks to your expertise at Earthfall. We did it, guys. <laughs> we saved the kingdom. We broke the game. We better oh, get raised geez. for this. <laughs> yeah, you do, because the like the king and queen realize they understand how close things were, and you know, um, you all explain to them that if it hadn't been for our efforts, everything would be falling apart by now. And they they believe you. They saw how how bad it got. And, so, like, tell me about what, what you guys get. Uh, what, what, what happens in Yordle? Well, Yordle doesn't want anything in particular. He's happy to just, like, see things that are different from where he grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's, he's perfectly fine to refuse all gifts from the king and queen. Uh, but he does make sure to impress upon the king and queen that uh, Malik is a totally legit mushroom dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and not a sham. Okay. What, what about Colt? <laughs> what does Colt get out of all this? I think he gets a promotion uh -huh. and a better sword. Is he captain of the guard now? Yeah. Okay. And like a nice like home and like better vacation. How long do you think it takes Colt to impress upon the people who were excited by a revolution that it's maybe not such a great idea with Colt around? Oh, well. One arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good at intimidation. So like yeah. maybe like. A very stern talking to. <laughs> okay. What and about, his help. <laughs> what about Wenshu? Wenshu's going to write a ballad about the whole experience, and it's going to become a very popular song. All right. Cool. And uh, Malik or Malik? The totally Malik. legitimate mushroom Malik. answer. The mushroom answer? The, mushroom man the court mushroom answer. Uh, Definitely would request a hefty research fund <laughs> to continue his <laughs> medicinal mushroom uh, findings. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, he would also, I think, I think, yeah, I kind of have a little backstory. Uh, like, I think the king was, like, not so sure. Like, the, a comedy of errors led to him being a mushroom mancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe, maybe with some added pressure, he, he's more legit now, even though he's not... He's not sure he is, <laughs> but he tries to be. No worries, Malik. You're totally legit. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gaining fame as a mushroom mancer, I think. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's uh, that's the end of the small shot. That, that is the end of, uh, All right. of <laughs> Riot and Waterhead. <laughs> that was really great. Fun. Oh, man. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> that was yeah, fun. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, we will be back next week, I believe, with a one shot, another one shot run by Zach. Yay! Yeah. So be sure to tune in for that. Same time, uh, 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time. See you then. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Good Bye. night.